guys. Hi, hey, chefs. Gail. Richard. George. Hey, good to see you again. Long time. <laughs> Ever since we got to Boston, people have been writing to us about how they can come taste the food on the show. So tomorrow, you'll cater a tasting event for Boston's biggest foodies and Top Chef fans right here in this kitchen. We tweeted out to Boston that we were doing this event, and we had over 15,000 responses in one day. We picked 75 of them to join us for an experience they'll never forget, or at least we hope they'll never forget. Chefs, you won't be shopping today. We will. <laughs> That's right, we're going to Whole Foods. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Let one of the judges shop for us. They'll see what it's like shopping through Whole Foods. It gets a little hectic. <laughs> you will not see the ingredients we choose until tomorrow when you have to cook with them. But from knowing us through the years, you should have a general idea of what to expect. We gotta get to the store before it closes. George, have fun getting to know all your fellow chefs at 1330 Boylston Street. We'll see you all tomorrow. Good luck, guys. We have two and a half hours to prep and cook a tasting portion dish for 75 Top Chef super fans. It's definitely nerve wracking to have one of the judges shop for your ingredients. Now we're seeing everything for the first time. You have to think on your feet. Lamb. You got lamb? Yep. I'm really excited to see Chef Top shop for me in a way where I can go a few different directions. Utilizing all these ingredients will definitely pack a lot of flavor into my dish. Ooh. Raz, tandoori, me, man. This is what I was most afraid of. In Richard Blaze's pantry that he shopped for Doug and myself, I feel left with a bunch of ingredients that don't necessarily go together, along with the doer of liquid nitrogen and the core container of Versa Whip. I'm recognizing that I'm gonna have a bit of a struggle getting a cohesive dish assembled today. I need a place. It's gonna be a weird day, Dougie. Adam is definitely a little bit flustered, but I'm not too worried. I'm just really gonna try and focus in on one or two big flavors and do what I can to bring them out. You took kimchi? Yeah. I'm not using it. Ginger, jackfruit. <sighs> it's pretty obvious that Adma bought some flavors that will definitely play to my cooking strengths, and she thought about some ideas and ingredients that would play well to George's Greek heritage. Beef, lamb, chicken, coconut milk, and curry spices. I'm really excited to make an Indian-style curry for Padme. You're going to meal gag, Ruby? Yeah, she's in front of my station. Hey, did she have the bed made for you when you walked into your pantry, or did you have to assemble your own pillows and stuff? Padma and I like the same flavors. <laughs> 145. You got some Middle Eastern, Moroccan-type spices going on. I'm comfortable with those flavors, so. Hopefully it all works out. My first elimination challenge, my heart's pounding, I'm nervous. Here these guys are battling through this competition for weeks now, and here I come, not knowing what to do. I'm just hoping that I have what it takes to compete with these other chefs. Tom wanted me to make sausage. Yeah. There's casings in, the, in my pantry. Oh my god, that dude. One hour, 30 minutes. Gail did really nice. I feel pretty good about this one. What are you trying to do? I'm gonna do a little sauteed shrimp with the herb salad. So Melissa's making shrimp scampi with a salad, again. And Melissa's a great chef, but choosing to play it safe is not going to win this. Live once, go hard. It's actually quite nice. <laughs> Someone else doing the shopping. I think Gail actually went with like North African Mediterranean flavors, you know? The shrimp, the harissa, potatoes. So I'm making a Tunisian potato salad with a poached cold shrimp with harissa oil. Doggy, okay, what are you making, bro? Uh, I'm cooking some mussels. I got chorizo, peppers, preserved lemons. Ah, so you got something super traditional. Definitely tough, not knowing what you're walking into and not getting to pick anything. I'm struggling a little bit in prep, just trying to conceptualize my dish. So I'm just really going to try and focus in on the mussels and the chorizo. It's a classic combination. I'm pretty sure I can make it taste good, and I'm just going to run with it. As the time is counting down, I'm definitely having a little bit of trouble cooking the lamb. The bones are really getting in the way, and it's not cooking evenly. So I have to finish cooking in the oven. But I'm thinking I should have took it off the bone and cooked it like that instead. Freaking out a little bit. Hashtag good luck. Hashtag good luck, he says. Three, two, 
One. Wow, our kitchen cleans up nicely. I know, <laughs> so fancy. Suji. Yes, Suji. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good. I got your basket. I heard. First of all, what did you think? You can be honest, you can judge me. Um. It was cute. But it, it was cute? Like, you got the pictures, you got the, the figs. It was cute? You no, know, like, like, I know what you're trying to say without saying it. There weren't enough chilies for you. There you go. You put the harissa, which I'm actually yes. very comfortable cooking with harissa. Good, me too. Um, That's why um, I put it in. So first, I have a Tunisian potato salad. I poached them in, in harissa and fish stock. Then I have a, a poached shrimp that it was chilled them in that same broth. Great. And then I made a, a white sangria. Great. I like the potato salad a lot. Oh, there's yeah. a good creaminess yeah. to that. What you want in your potato salad? You know what I think it, it could use? Some chili. <laughs> yeah. Well, next time I promise you I'll get you more chilies. Thanks so much. Thank you, Thank you so much, Katsuji. Hi, Gregory. Uh, it smells delicious. <laughs> I hope I did your ingredients proud. Thank, Thank you me. so much. The curry leaves smell really good. So we have a coconut milk and chicken in Madras curry, and then the awesome jackfruit that I was really excited to work with. Good. It's a good play between sweet and hot. Acid. It's funny, you know, Gregory. It's really nicely cooked. It's really nice. Hi, Adam. It smells oh. good over here. Well, thank you. What did you think of Richard's pantry? I definitely was drawn to the liquid nitrogen first with my eye line and oh. knew one of the ingredients I wouldn't be using this afternoon. <laughs> you know, it's just that not happens. it's not in my bag of tricks. It's not any kind of any portion of any technique I'm familiar with. So what I've made for you guys today is a pepadu pepperad. Potted pepadus, holland peppers, onions, garlic, white wine. I took the shrimp shells and a little bit of fish fume. The shrimp, the oil that I'm pouring over them is the oil from my mushroom conserva. How do you feel about the texture of the shrimp? I feel like I would have preferred it five degrees hotter and five seconds longer on the cook of the shrimp probably. And it feels a little squeaky, you know what I mean? I immediately receive the only pieces of negative feedback that I've gotten all day, but I feel good about the pepperad that I served. Ultimately, I, I feel like the pepidu was what I really wanted to focus on more than anything else. All right. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. That was exciting. Awesome. I thought all the food was really flavorful and creative. Everybody had a great time. I was really happy to see that we were all well represented, but there were more mistakes. George, Doug, and Gregory, please stay where you are. Everybody else, please step aside to the right. You three were our favorites of the night, so congratulations. Exhale. <laughs> <laughs> George, to get a second chance and to come back and perform the way you did today, I thought that was truly impressive. Well, someone did nice shopping for me. The lamb meatball, really great use of putting beef in with the lamb to make sure that there was enough fat in there. And the lentils were great, too. You really infused a lot of flavor in, into both components of your dish. Thank you. Doug, this is the most savory, soulful, and well-spiced dish I've had of yours. I kept on overthinking, and then eventually it was like, just just go with it. <laughs> when you think about it, chorizo and mussels and you know garlic and peppers, it's, these are all things that naturally go together. So it was a great job of editing down your choices and you put together just a, a powerhouse of a dish. Thank you. Well, Gregory, I mean, this dish was otherworldly. It was like a show and tell at your station. You had the jackfruit, it looked like an alien autopsy out there. <laughs> We're always looking to give the guest an experience Absolutely. and I think you delivered that. Awesome. Thank you. The star of the dish was the chicken. Uh, it was perfectly cooked, gave us great flavor. You didn't disappoint. Thank you. Gail, please do the honors of announcing the winning chef. Well, the winner was the person who, in the end, was able to look at this laundry list of pantry ingredients and find something flavorful, really clear, and really inspired. And that person was Dougie. Nice work. It was really great. <laughs> Fantastic dish, Doug. Awesome. Thank you, guys.